Hey tribe, welcome to the HJDC Yarn Room Tour. So, I rearranged my yarn room earlier in the week and I just love this space. Every time I step in, I'm just absolutely overawed with just how amazing it is in here. I love the light, I love the space that I've got, I love having all of my yarn and I wanted to share it with you. So, I put this vlog together so that you can see this space and appreciate it as much as I do. I honestly dreamt for so long about having a space like this and I love it. So I've been crocheting since uh, for like over a decade now. Originally I had loads of yarn and I had like fitted wardrobes in my bedroom in my parents home and I would stuff it all in and I had a lift up bed and I'd stuff loads of yarn in there but I never really had any of it on show until I moved into my own home. Um, I rented a little apartment for almost two years and in that apartment I had um, a bookshelf with most of my yarn in it and my yarn stash was very very small compared to this um, and then I started to really crochet a lot lot more at that point and then I got more of a stash and then when I moved into my next home which was a two bedroom home I had the biggest bedroom as my yarn room. I think when I first moved in, I had my, um, the littler room, the spare bedroom as my yarn room. And then I had some changes with housemates coming and going and my yarn was with me within my own room. And then um, it was all in the main bedroom once I lived alone again. And I, I loved the space and I loved the room, but I didn't use it as much because I'm a highly sensitive person and noise really, really impacts on me. So in my previous room, um, it was adjoined to next door and you could really hear everything they did. And I always found like, I felt self-conscious going in there at like really late or really early because I didn't want to disturb them and things like that. So I tended to go in, get what I wanted and go back to my bedroom or downstairs. Um, and then towards the end of being in that home, I moved it all back into the smaller room and I wanted to do a yarn tour. And then um, I ended up moving in with my partner and it was all like, um, oh, he planned for it, but I hadn't, I didn't really know it was coming. I had an inkling, but I didn't know when. Um, and so then I moved in and I've had this yarn room set up now since January and we're now in May, almost June. So I really wanted to share the space. I have used it um, quite a bit and so it's evolved quite a bit in terms of um, like layout. So I don't know if you remember, but when I first moved in, I had the desk against this wall and my back against that wall. And then I moved it after a couple of weeks because it just didn't feel right. And I put the desk against that wall so I could look out the window and I just liked it because you, I had this as a backdrop. Um, and the reason I didn't put it under the window is because I didn't want to block the heat of the radiator. What with it being winter, I really like to be warm and put my feet on the radiator. <laughs> um, but now we're in the summer and although the weather is still taking its sweet time for the sun to really kick in, the weather is a lot better and so I made the decision to move my desk under the window so behind you I have the window I've got a stunning view um, of like I can see the roof line of the houses but just loads of green trees the tree over there with loads of blossom and then the sky and it's lovely and I get so much light and it now means that there's loads of space within the room because when you walk in there's quite a big floor space um, and it's filled with some of my most favourite things and I wanted to show you around. So let's jump into that, shall we? Now, as I said, I rearranged this room earlier in the week and 
it just looks so fancy and lovely. I was like, I have to record a yard tour, a room tour. And then promptly that evening, I'd already messed it up because when I'm in the flow of being creative, like I needed to pull out all the yarns, all the ideas, write this, draw that. And I was just, I literally made myself a, a patch on the floor and I just had stuff everywhere. But I always try at the end of the night to like reset the room back to factory setting. So put it back to how it should be so that the mess doesn't become huge because I find that it might take me like five minutes to do that, 10 minutes to do that. If I leave it, it will take me hours to do it at some point in the month. Um, and I just love walking into a really tidy room. As you can see, I've got my yarn tower behind me. Now it's normally taller because I actually have two tubs of yarn down at my feet because I have been making granny squares. Um, so that normally goes, basically there's like this much clearance under the roof, the ceiling <laughs> um, of yarn. And my yarn is arranged, it makes sense to me. So this bag that you can see is all of the Aaron yarn that Mr. B and Bird Street yarn kindly sent to me. Then this one is all of my four ply and my cotton yarns. Um, that is the most expensive tub of yarn that I have in here because a lot of it is hand dyed yarn. There's a lot of sock yarn in there. And I'm still figuring out the perfect pattern to put that into. But I've got a few ideas, so don't you worry. Then the next one down is actually got um, a lot of my jumper quantity, sweater quantity of DK yarn. So you can see this pink here, which is actually from a pound shop, and it's this yarn, it's the glitter pink. And then it also has some um, DK yarn. I've got 400 grams of that. My grandma's gonna gift me another 400, so I'll have 800 grams of that yarn. And then on the other side, I have like a darker pink as well. This one. And I've got like a kilo of that. And again, that's from the pound shop. And I've grouped them together because there's enough there to like make a jumper or something at some point. The next one down is actually full of samples. Um, I've got a summer collection, winter collections, loads of different pattern collections in mind and so lots of different yarn that I've been purchasing is in there. Um, if you watched my vlog sort of December, January, you will have seen it's all the teddy yarns, the fluffy yarns and whatnot are all in there um, with the big swatches that I made so I could figure out what designs I wanted to use, what yarn for. And then also I've got um, in there my some of my scrap yarn so there's a great big bag i think it's um is it lovecraft or wool warehouse they send out like the organza bags with the drawstrings and i've got one of them that's just full of odds of ends of yarn that i can then make the magic um balls of yarn which i then use in patterns so there's a big bag of that as well there's actually yarn at the top <sighs> here and that's got um, a lot of the yarn left over for Renewal, which is my new Granny Square cardigan. I purchased that yarn to make a blanket for my partner's step-grandmother, and I had some left over, so that's where all of that went into. It needs to move into my DK tub, which is here. This is my double knit yarn, most of it anyway. I've got loads of different colours in there. Um, I went through a, a phase for quite a while of just buying like random skeins of yarns in different colours. 
and most of the random colors were like to cheer me up or just because I didn't have that color that shade in my stash and the reason um, I'm glad that I did do that is because it means I can make all of these granny squares and they're all different colors all different rounds and um, I really like the thrown together look and so having all of those colors to dip into really helps I also have all of this yarn on my table on my desk because I have been working on those granny squares so I will always, as far as I can see in my future, I will always have a really big stash of double knit yarn so that I can delve into it for my granny square projects and there's a few shades that are lacking within that so I'll probably top it up. Um, I was trying to keep my DK to just one tub but it's already, not only is it in this tub but it's in that tub as well and then there's also... Um, a little bit of it in here <laughs> so what I might do is swap that tub with the black lid for a bigger tub like you can see here so that it's got more room so the one I held up just now I'll basically have two of those just for my double knit and I will always keep lots of shades of acrylic double knit yarn because they're just so great and versatile for making the granny square projects that I absolutely love to make. So it just means that when I'm making granny squares that I can really go in with random colours because I have got so many shades and they're all different brands of yarn, um, all of various ages. Mainly I've purchased it all but some of it I was gifted. Um, and it just means that I can get this really random effect that I absolutely love. And then in this other big one that you can see is most of my chunky and Aran weight yarn. So the really big hank of yarn um, is like an oatmeal porridgey type colour. I actually really love it and my grandmother gifted me that. It's 100% wool she used to in her words send for it so she doesn't have the internet she would um get like a catalogue through the post and she'd fill it out and send off and order absolutely huge huge bags of yarn and then she would just make um everybody in the family like aaron jumpers until she ran out um and so she had that and another type that she gifted to me so that I could have a go at making stuff and I haven't touched that purely because I think there's like 1200 grams so like 1.2 kilos um is a lot if you think that this is 100 grams when you buy a standard ball of this look how shiny that is like a standard double knit acrylic ball in the UK is 100 grams so if you think I have 12 of those in terms of that yarn, there's a lot. And so I've held off using it because I want it to go in a project that um, maybe is like a matching skirt and top or something. Like I, I really wanted to use that up. Um, then I have this pink chunky tweed. I actually have some of it here. And... I purchased that because I wanted to knit a jumper that I'd seen in one of my nanny's books and it never really came about um, but I would like to try it again but though in all honesty I don't quite think the pattern is my style but I would love to knit in chunky because it would just build up so much quicker because <laughs> I'm so much faster at crochet I really am there's other various bits of yarn in there some of which I got from yarn shows and again I'm saving it for that perfect project so it's about time I started to use it and then at the very bottom there is another tub that you can't quite see it's only got one lot of yarn in it and it's some Debbie Bliss yarn that I bought over a decade ago and it's this really cozy comfy fluffy stuff I spent quite a bit on it still so um I've never used it because I haven't found the project that goes well. It's not for granny squares, it's like a really floofy, chunky yarn. Um, and I've just never found a project to put it into. So I had a really big clear out of my yarn. I had like double this and I did a really big clear out of the big pot that I've just held up. I 
gifted like two of those to a friend within my church and was like use it do what you want with it because I really wanted to pare down what I've got so that I could make room for yarn that I want so that I can make my future projects as I said I've got my collections coming um and just I was just hanging on to so much yarn that I knew I was never going to use so I let it go um yeah then in terms of my shelving unit which is slightly wonky I got that for £20 off of Facebook sell and I just spray I painted and spray painted the shelves and that was that um and I just wanted some quick and easy storage that I could put everything on so we've got my sewing machine we've got these two pink tubs and within those pink tubs I've got all of my jewelry making stuff so before I really got into crochet I used to make a lot of jewelry so I've got a lot of beads, a lot of hardware and different bits and pieces and that's still all in there. And again in the knit, the tin on top, the knitting tin, absolutely full of beads because I just, I love making jewellery and I really wanted to make a range of bracelets and stuff for HGDC. Um, and I might do that still. And then next to it I've got a tub of um, journals so I've written a journal every I've kept a journal since I was like 16 years old so I've got that tub and the one on the shelf above um, and they are absolutely rammed full I don't know how many there are but I'm gonna say I've got 20 to 30 of them and they're in there um, they used to be in my bookshelves but they were taking up that much room and I, I don't need to access them frequently so they're both they're all in those two tubs for now and then in this one I've got whips so um, there's a Harry Potter bag and that's got um, a knitting project that I started last October just before I became ill um, which, which basically I ripped down three times and so I've started to build that back up and then I've got underneath it loads of granny squares um, that just need to be joined into a blanket at some point probably do that towards the winter and then on this shelf I've got some finished blankets and some whips and bags full of other whip bags and honestly so much stuff but I just love it and then I have more whips on this shelf things I've started things I'm trialing and then up here is mainly the stuff that I've finished so I've got my granddad's blanket I've got some yarn that needs to be absorbed into here somewhere um, blankets I've finished patterns I've finished mainly all of my handmade clothing lives in here and then when I want to get dressed I will just come in here and grab whatever it is I want to wear um, there isn't enough room in our closet space for me to put them and I quite like them on display anyway um, and then I also have my giant mirror in here that came with me from my home it doesn't match the interior design the decor of our bedroom it goes perfectly in here and I like to have a really big mirror just to try on whatever it is I'm working on and also because the light's so great in here I actually do my makeup down here in the mirror as well um, I like to sit on the floor whilst I'm doing my makeup I also have loads of vision boards all around the room um, I I'd make one every year and for a while when I first moved out I made them to go on the wall in frames because I had like my own space and I wasn't sharing it with anyone and I could just put whatever I wanted up um, but I stopped doing that a couple years back just because of the sheer amount of them that I had I don't want to let them go so eventually I will end up um, I start rather than making like the giant one that did the money for paper so eventually they can just go into my journals but for now I like leaving them up because I like how inspiring they are, I like having the colour um, and then under my desk I have my bookshelves I have got loads of knitting and crochet magazines I have an entire cubby hole it's got cookbooks and gardening books because it's one of my loves in life i love it i love gardening and then i also have um arranged most of my knitting and crochet books by height because i just like that aesthetic of having the slope um 
as I said, I love to crochet, but I also do knit. Um, I don't knit as often, but I love looking at knitting books to get inspiration. And then I tend to then think, how can I crochet that? How can I convert that? So I do have quite a few knitting books, probably more than I do crochet books, but I do find that it's easier to get hold of knitting stuff than it is to get hold of crochet. Um, within one of my cubbies, I also have snacks. So I have biscuits, crisps, and crackers. And that's just so that when I'm up here, if Albie is asleep, my puppy downstairs, then I can just help myself to snacks without having to go and disturb him because he lives in our kitchen. And if he sees me, then he wants to come out and play. Um, I also have some organizers with patterns in them. Um, I collect vintage patterns. It's just something that I really like. I like looking through them. Um, I think it's a real big part of social history to see how fashion has changed, the pricing of things, the materials that were available, the way that things were styled, the photography. Um, very, The very early stuff that I've got, it only shows a certain demographic within the UK. It isn't until we get to sort of the 80s that you see any people of colour at all and even then it's very very few but I love looking back at the vintage patterns and also that the vintage pattern the vintage patterns were really sparse with their directions as well because they were just like knit this repeat this they didn't spell it out they didn't hold your hands so it's a whole like they really condensed it down to a very small area and you learn a lot by trying to follow one of them, you really do. Um, so I actually have three binders and I've separated them out into um, like socks, garments, and then Aaron knitting. That's something that my grandma loves to make and I've just always really enjoyed looking at them. I don't necessarily make them, um, but I wanted to collect the patterns. I like the thought of having a really big pattern bank to pass on to um my children hopefully i have a child that wants to crochet or knit but if not maybe a grandchild like my grandmother um and then i've got various folders of my own that i organize bits and pieces in like my patterns that i've um released and things like that i've also got a whole box full of candles and wax melts for my burner so whenever i come in here and i'm about to start work it's like one of my rituals is to um start a candle and once i smell the scent and i can see the candle it just like signifies to me it's time to work um but it's a really nice way of having like it's time to work so i've got a box full of those and when you open it i wish you could smell the aroma when you open that box it's so so nice um and i also have a mug that is full of pens and pots and stitch holders and things like that, which was gifted to me by Brad's stepmom at Christmas. Um, and then just another pot that's just full of electronics and bits and pieces. Um, I think we all have like various charging cables and blah, 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 blah. So I put them in a pot just to keep them tidy. Then on my desk, I don't really have a lot. I like to leave my desk clear um, for when I need to get work done. So I have my Mac. I absolutely adore my Mac and it's something, it's like one of my most used possessions. I actually have it propped up on a stack of Vogue magazines just so that when I'm zooming it's at the right height. Um, I've got my pencil case and I've also got a candle with an affirmation and a crystal that Brad gifted to me. I have my remote for when I'm recording and taking selfies. And I also have a TV. Now, whenever I'm in here, I always end up watching YouTube on my Mac, even though I have a TV screen. Um, yeah, I don't know. But the reason I've got a TV screen is because I can connect my Mac to it. And when I'm editing patterns, I find it really easy to go from um, spreadsheet to pattern by having the two screens. And I can really get close on the detail because I can really zoom in on the TV screen. So I use it as a second monitor in effect. Um, I also have my whiteboard, which always has like a to-do list on there. I find that I work really well by updating my planner and then putting like the top three tasks onto the whiteboard which I can then tick off and they're just there 
and you can see them no matter what and then I can update it throughout the day if need be and I find that if I update my to-do list the night before that my day goes a whole lot smoother because I already know what I need to do before I even wake up um, and then I've got my YouTube lights which are on right now um, they basically are like daylight bulbs and I put them on when I'm recording but sometimes I put them on when I'm working just so I've got really good light and then my windowsill is got loads of bits and pieces on it um, most importantly it has the ashes of my dog that I had prior to Albie he was with me for 11 years and when he was put to sleep um, I just knew that he would only be comfortable and happy if he was with me just like he was in real life so I have his ashes and a teddy bear with his collar on um, and an image of him and some of our other dogs that have passed away. I've also got a few with pictures with my family when we were younger and um, I've got a frame that my mum made, the image within it, she does decoupage and lots of paper crafts, a plant, my wax burner and um, a couple of other bits and pieces. That one has been decorated by my grandmother so they're all quite sentimental things that are up there. Um, and yeah, this is my yarn room. I absolutely love it. Um, Carmen of New Leaf Designs posted some stuff on her stories of her yarn room. And I just love looking at other people's spaces, how they've got things set up. Um, and so I thought I would do the same with my yarn room. Um, it is a, just a wonderful, amazing space. On my mirror I actually have some things propped up. I didn't want to put too much on the walls in here because eventually I'm going to have a office made in the garden, a shed converted. So I didn't want to put loads of holes in the walls up here because it's not going to be forever. Um, but I've got my Tiana image. Um, I'm an absolute huge Princess and the Frog fan. And then I've got a print out from the book Girl Boss. It's like the first business book that I read that I really really resonated with and it says bet on yourself. And then I've got my logo on my business cards which I framed. And I've got loads of images on my photos, on my mirror. I just love, I'm a very visually orientated person so having all these things around me is just lovely. I also have an amazing sound system so I can come in, I can put on the tunes and I can just crochet my heart away. I just love it. So that's my yarn room tour. That's my yarn room tour. I hope you've enjoyed it. Comment below the bit that is your favorite and because I'd love to know. And then I will see you in the next vlog. Thanks for watching, take care, bye.